Hey guys, it's Gaming Centaur here. I decided rather than letting music play from OC Remix, I would describe how I did this picture. This is a little bit of a test run, and so there's going to be a lot of, uh... I would describe the unedited audio with a bunch of pauses and whatnot. So let me know how well this do, and enjoy! So this picture was a lot more ambitious than I originally thought it was going to be. I did plan from the beginning to do at least three to four different sections, mainly four sections of it, two of which being the mer uh, mermen, but I didn't realize just how complex it would get, especially later on after I did the uh, mermen. You'll see what I mean. Something that I feel is quite common throughout this sort of state, made with the Mermen, is that of redoing the line art. In particular, mainly the nose, the hands, and and sort of that necklace there, as well as adding a few additions. I will say it was a bit annoying at first. And right here you can probably tell that there's a bit of a jump, or at least a more subtle one. That's because the original plan was basically when I had sort of the, you know, get to the third phase, I would do the saying for the uh, mermen. And when I told this to one of my friends, she basically just recommended just to do it, do it, you know, right now, why wait? And honestly, he definitely took up on that advice in the end. It's always interesting how better a picture looks once you add, like, inner and outer shading. It makes it definitely look a lot more 3D than originally thought. Alright, with the first merman done, let's get on to the next one. The first thing I definitely wanted to do when doing the second one was change the hand a bit. Mainly just how long it was. Like how long it was sticking out because it looked so unnatural to me at the time. And I'm really glad I fixed it. Yeah. 
So here's one of the things that sort of worried me when doing the contest. It involves only two OC, one or two OCs you can use, and without a bio, I didn't know exactly what the the oh what the emotion of the character was. Basically, um, what he generally was like. What I'm trying to put it is that all characters sort of have this like fight or flight, and I didn't know which one was which, and so basically I made the pink one flight, and I sort of made the blue one fight, as shown by, as shown by his expression. Like I said, I had to go back in into a liner and redo a bunch of things. This was especially the factor with the uh, blue merman because he was missing a lot of things such as his necklace and armband. So I had to go in and basically re-add those. When it comes to saying, I definitely think I did the best with this Mer Boy compared to the other one. Mainly because I feel like I finally sort of got that plan sorted out of whether to do it now or later. And when I, I guess I decided to do it now, I honestly did a better job with it. It also helps that I had a better mental map of where exactly I wanted the lighting to be coming from. I will say though that the lighting part is very, very tedious. It's very slow and someone definitely needs a lot of patience for that. And it also helps to do it more digitally than traditional because there is no undo button when traditional and so that becomes a really big pain in the ass sometimes. It's often why I don't have much lighting in my traditional work to begin with. Alright, with the Merboys done, or Mermen done, now it's on to probably the most difficult part it was for me. The plan was always to have them in some sort of bubble trap. That was always going to be the case. What I didn't expect was how, again, tedious and annoying the whole thing was going to be built. It didn't uh, I guess you'll see later on of what I mean. I don't know how many times I've said it, but the reason why I've always loved Paint.net is its line tool. It just feels so more in control than anything else. Even though it is a bit pixely, I still love just just working with it. It also helps that the, it's what helped create the buttons in the end. I 
I believe it was a friend I was talking to at the time that suggested uh, adding a bit of rust to it, or maybe it was just an idea that I had during it. Either way, I decided to add some rust to it, just to give it a bit more personality. More of an old, old look to it. I feel like by this point I was slowly becoming drained as well, even though this is probably the most important part that I wanted to get across the most, and that was sort of a more three-dimensional look for the bubble that I was going to use. What I, I wanted them from the beginning to have their hands poke out like they're trying to escape the bubble. i say I did a very good job, but I'm still up had annoyed by paint.net later on and I think you guys will notice why. Yeah, it turns out that when you merge things on pa on paint.net, it keeps the opacity equality of that of that layer that was merged. So it ended up becoming this more annoying mess basically to me. Oh yeah, and right here I had to fix the bubble because I edited it for the purposes of the next guy and ended up not saving a good enough quality for later. And honestly, after the stream, I ended up making sort of uh, the bubble an asset. It was supposed to help me out later on for the final part. Wow, I'm still amazed at how it finally turned out to this day. And it actually looks even better in the final part of this, which is the background. And here it is, the final part of this very long and very time consuming, but in a good way, uh, piece. The background. I definitely wanted to put this underwater, and it. And what I was trying to go for, apparently, need, I felt like I need a lot more. So you're gonna see a technique that I used later on, and an old technique returning. I 
I knew I wanted a sandy, you know, like, I knew I wanted a sandy ground for this, but I wanted to be a bit more hill-like. I wanted to have these, like, big peaks and valleys, but you could still tell that the more you w looked out, the more it was getting darker and darker, and you were getting farther and farther away from the background. No, the foreground, fuck. <laughs> Whoops. I had this brush, this little patchwork brush, and the reason why I'm bringing it up now is because at the time I felt like I needed like something to help give some dimension to the sand rather than just leaving a flat basic color. I feel like for everything I was going for, it needed more. It needed like more texturing and whatnot. And if you look above, like the top of it, you can see an old thing returning. It's Something that I really, really enjoyed doing, especially, and I'm glad that I tried it out the first time in my January 2017 commission. It ended up making like the top of the water more water-like, while also giving a nice. It may, it just made it feel a bit more cartoonishly realistic, if that makes any sense. Wanna add dramatic but good lane? Just add in God Rays here. Well, I definitely know that just white on white is not a good kind of way to do saying, especially for water. So you can clearly tell that I added in a bit more blue to it. I still think the God Rays helped out the picture the most. Yeah, that jump was not intentional whatsoever. Uh, during in my streamings of this, for some odd reason, XSplit refused to cooperate and ended up just shutting down for some odd reason. I had to reboot the entire PC in order to do it. Thank God I saved. Ah, uh, copy and paste, a man's best friend when it comes to doing art. However, I will say that for this part, I couldn't just do copy and paste. I had to do more than that. So what I ended up doing is basically copy, paste, and then just delete, erase bits more and more. to Again, to make it look like it, you were moving farther and farther out. Basically, I just called this... Uh, God damn it. Uh, copy, paste, and I forget. God damn it! Oh yeah, the rock. For some odd reason, during the stream, I was like, I know I need, I need a rock. So I just ended up putting one right there. I feel like it works better, but that's just me. Okay, I believe it was copy, paste, and send back. Back into the background, that is. And basically what I did with the bubbles is, yes, I did copy and paste, but more and more over time, I decided to do some, like, soft saying around the edges of the bubble, and then basically just, like, make, erase more of the entire bubble. That way it can look a bit more distant. Of course, it gotta resize, other, otherwise it's gonna look super freaky.
And finally, the logo, which I'm hoping is preventing people from art thieving my art, which has happened on numerous occasions. And with that, the picture is done. I feel like this is my favorite work to date, but that could change any time. Because it's a contest entry, I do hope that everyone else does well in the contest as well. And... Whew, please let me know what you guys think about this, because I might do more in the future, I might not. Depends on your guys' feedback. Anyways, see you guys later.